We're back, another day here at the shop. I just had a kid, second kid, I got two kids. I got kids now, that's a weird word. Uh, these are not my kids. So for those of you guys that haven't noticed, our store has kind of changed drastically and we have all kinds of new products. And this is a random little thing that we found on our new store. Andrew, what do we got in here, man? Race Tech Capacitor Hand Thrown Glider Kit. Yellow. So we got a little vape here. <laughs> <laughs> so you fill this up with batteries and then you jam it in here and it like supercharges it for like 10 seconds and then you launch it. Apparently they can go for like 120 seconds wait, there. Wait, so it charges it in 10 seconds? No batteries, it's just a, a capacitor. Essentially just, wow, this is, you're really putting me at. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> to my knowledge, when you run power through a capacitor and you unplug it, the capacitor will actually store that energy until it is discharged. I know we have some capacitor experts, some electrical experts out there. Let us know what we don't know. And we appreciate you guys for doing that. How do you start the motor? <laughs> you gotta crank it up. It's, it's like pulling the pin out of a grenade, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, what are these things called? Real Tech Glider Man. The nose, the nose dive in the stall is real. This is throwing technique here. Yeah, mine doesn't sound good. <laughs> That's pretty crazy though, all of a capacitor. So not impressed with the airplane, but I will say this little tiny motor, the prop, and whatever this capacitor is inside has my curiosity peaked. <laughs> so the planes have no stability here. Let me try giving it a little dihedral. I don't know anything about how planes work. <laughs> So, I'm just gonna like fold them in a weird way and see what happens. When your wings have an upward pitch on both sides equally like that, it kind of gives the plane self-correcting tendencies. If you are in a bank, it'll actually kind of correct itself. I think that's pretty good. Wow. <laughs> it's coming back around! Oh my god, dude! No, no, it's gone. <laughs> what I'm thinking, if we can figure out a way to make this have somewhat of a little bit of control, uh, so you could actually fly it away from you and maybe do a pattern or two and then come back and land without having to go chase it like you saw me have to do earlier. We have our old trusty micro vapor here. This is an all-in-one. Not only is it two servos, um, but it also is a receiver and a brushed ESC. We can hook this up somehow and maybe give this elevator and rudder and potentially even control the throttle a little bit. Um, that runs off a of one cell lipo battery, so anywhere between 3.7 to 4.2 volts. 4.2 volts. We're going to splice into these wires and charge this up and see what kind of output it's generating. So 2.4-ish when it's fully charged. That, that might not be enough to power the board. What if we did two capacitors together? We could. Wire them from the series or something. Yeah. But would that work? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty big capacitor. If you put them in series... Should just add the voltage together. When you wire stuff in series, right, the voltage will uh, add together. When you wire stuff in parallel, the capacity adds together. Since we're trying to get more voltage here and we don't really care about the capacity, uh, we would be wiring them in series. So our concern was that two capacitors would blow up this little board that we were showing you earlier because this is only rated to about 4.2, a one cell battery. So this thing that we're charging it with uh, only has three AA batteries inside, which give 4.5 volts output. Yeah. So it might not even be able to charge the capacitors above that. Yeah, so we should be good. Dude, let's try it. I'm not an expert at soldering, but I will say the best tip I could give to people who are new to soldering or still getting trying to get better at soldering is just go for it. And every time you do it, you get a little bit better. Go charge it and see if it blows up or not. That sounds like it's draining faster on this. Yeah, it does. So it's actually looking pretty good. It's at 3.7. Pretty quickly, it gets down to two in no time. When you put capacitors in series, the total capacitance will decrease. It will be less than the capacitance of an individual capacitor. Wow. That's a lot of capacity. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in, in other words, it'll give us the more voltage, but right. it'll decrease. It'll decrease the capacity. I'm going to keep going. I'm not only going to hook up the servos so I can potentially hook them up to control surfaces, uh, but I'm also going to hook the motor up to throttle. 
Uh, I have the board hooked up, so technically, if this works, when I charge this bad boy up, it should power this and go into bind mode. The motor should not spin and hopefully nothing should smoke. Ready, set, go. It did blink for- Oh! It did, no way! Oh my gosh. I still don't know if that means it's gonna work or not, but it it's blinks, I made a blinky light. I'm going to try to attempt to see if I can get servos moving and stuff like that. Binding. <laughs> it's binding, dude. It's working. Oh my gosh. It's working. All right, I'm gonna try throttle real quick. <laughs> no way. Dude. Oh my gosh. No way, dude, it's working. I'm optimistic. Here's my success measurement 2018 of the capacitor plane project. If I can successfully go out in the backyard here, sit in a lawn chair with a beverage and my buddy and my dog, and sit down with this capacitor plane, charge it up for 10 seconds, chuck it, fly one pattern, and then come back and land to do it again and again and again, that's a success. I now have to retrofit the board on here, and uh, this baby's gonna fly. We have full elevator and rudder control, three channel. The motor is on a throttle. Everything is hooked up, ready to go. Cool thing about this is, don't need to wait for your batteries to charge. Well, you do, but it's, it's only like 10 seconds. So. Even at the end of the day, if we take the motor off and just use the capacitors to power the servo so you can fly a glider, I think that still could be pretty cool. The nice thing about super light planes like this is they don't get explodey like a lot of the bigger planes. Here we go. Let's try one more time. I'm just gonna go for it. I flew it and honestly if it wasn't for the wind I probably could have landed it. I'm kind of leaning towards your idea of doing a capacitor uh, rubber band. Yeah. So when we were at Flight Fest, we met some awesome dudes from, I believe it's called Nighthawk Gliders. I might try something like that. Maybe even use one of their gliders. They gave us a couple, but I'm thinking cut the motor completely and see if we can get a capacitor to give you control of a glider for a good 30 seconds to a minute so you can launch it and fly it back down. Yeah, I think I think that's a solid idea. So back to the drawing board yet again. Let's go. Okay, so we actually found one. Look at this. We, we even have one that unbuilt. So shout out to NighthawkGliders.com. These guys were having a blast at Flight Fest, uh, really embracing the spirit of Flight Fest. I'm gonna crack it open, put together a whole new airframe, and see if we can transition towards a capacitor glider. So to say that this is version two is definitely an understatement. To get an RC version of a capacitor plane to have the same level of success as the free flight glider has proved to be a little bit of a challenge. Where we left off is I was gonna use one of these Nighthawk gliders as an airframe and hope that the rigidity would be enough to be able to fly it faster. And as I started to build, I realized very quickly that this is going to be heavy. This is the first time I've ever dealt with a micro DIY build. And the idea of weight is completely different compared to a larger plane. A glob of glue can totally change the characteristics of your plane and completely make it twice the weight. And as I was building it, I knew it was gonna be a little bit heavy. So I quickly realized after I enlarged this wing that I was also gonna need a larger tail. So I enlarged the tail with some polyhedral there on the back, which hopefully will keep it a little bit self-correcting if you know what I mean. Here we go. <laughs> Dude, for a second there, I saw all my hopes and dreams just swirling down the old toilet. But it pulled out last minute and got into a nice glide, which leaves me optimistic. And the cool thing about a glider is just with these capacitors, look, it's still charged. I gotta go get a chair and some buddies. Let's go. <laughs> hey, 
buddy. Hey, what are we doing? All right, so I forced Jeremy to be my buddy. At the beginning of all this, I made the stupid claim that says, at the end of the day, if I can sit out in my backyard with my buddy and my dog and have this thing and launch it in the air and fly it around for a couple seconds and then land it so I can do it again in my lap, that would be called a success in my book. You guys look like buddies too. You're wearing the exact same outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let my dog know how it goes when I get home. Just a quick charge up there it takes about less than 10 seconds, and then you got a full charge. Good to go. Do like a half pull this first time. Okay, like that. Yeah, and that's a good trajectory. Just watch it. Watch your arms. Go ahead. Okay, got a long way to go. Let me so go. Which one of us has to get it? <laughs> full pull and go like like about like that too. Ready? Yep. Oh, so close. so close! So close, so close. All right, take 45. Oh. And if you're not working, oh. <laughs> yeah! Oh. <laughs> nice, man. All right, that was intense to say the least. That was a heck of a build project. First time ever dealing with micros. But in my book, I'd call it a success. Now guys, I realize this is not the best <laughs> flying glider. I just thought it was interesting. Capacitors, man. I never thought, and actually yeah. look, it's still running off of these two capacitors. So I think it's definitely uh, worth exploring. And I think I'm probably gonna be doing more little projects with these to see what else I can power off of capacitors. Leave us a comment down below if you guys have any uh, ideas, experiments that you'd like to see, or maybe you've tried on your own, because I know you guys are crazy out there doing all kinds of crazy projects. And uh, thank you for tuning in. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. Jeremy, thanks for being my buddy, man. Hey, anytime. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> see, see, see you guys. Bye. <laughs>